century, Mr. Edison invented this machine. The results left much to be desired. But about the same time, another industry began to develop and was to flourish and almost disappear in 30 years. This industry was mechanical musical instruments that used perforated music rolls. Here is an upright player piano fitted with a mechanism to play these rolls. At the top we see the spool box which takes the roll. In front of the keys we see the various controls which operate the piano. And at the bottom we see the foot pedals which provide the motive power. These instruments were capable of fine musical effects and an operator with some practice could produce credible musical results. These instruments formed the heart of the home entertainment in the 1920s. Just as our stereos do today, the player piano in 1920 found the family grouped around singing to the rolls. The commercial value of the player piano was soon to be realized, and manufacturers were very quick to build player pianos with coin slots attached. Here is a Cremona mechanical piano with a coin slot attached. Some of these pianos became very, very large. The front, being of stained glass, was typical to most of these instruments. Some of the instruments towered almost eight feet with enormous stained glass fronts. Many of these instruments were nothing more than simple pianos with a mandolin attachment, as is the Cremona. But some of them became extremely elaborate, containing all sorts of traps, drums, cymbals, triangles. 
and in some cases in the more elaborate varieties even one or two sets of organ pipes. We see the interior of the kimono. We can see the normal upright player action, and if we look carefully, we can see a rail which moves the hammers closer and further away from the keys, giving some form of expression. The rubber tubes leading to the bottom portion of the piano actually lead to the stack, which causes the notes to play. part of the Nickelodeon. We can see the motor and the large flywheel, and attached to the flywheel, the connecting rods which move the pump, which cause and produce the air to operate the piano. Here is the tracker bar and the paper roll passing over it. The tracker bar was a brass bar with holes drilled into it, which correspond to the holes in the paper roll. Connected to each one of these holes to the tube which leads to the stack. As the roll passes over the paper bar, when a hole appears, air rushes through the paper, through the tracker bar, up the tube to the stack, and causes the note to play. highly successful commercial instruments. This is a Steinway dual art reproducing piano. These pianos were capable of not only producing the notes, but all of the accents that were recorded originally by a great artist. Here we see a roll be inserted into the piano and passed over the tracker bar. Fantasy Impromptu by Chopin, played by Harold Bauer. If we look carefully, we'll notice that the center of the roll contains the playing notes, and along the margin of the roll are holes that actually control the performance, making it louder, softer, accenting notes, and operating the pedals. You hear some of the controls in front of the keys. This is one of the mechanisms that control the air or vacuum moving to various parts of the piano. The pianos were fitted with all sorts of valves and regulators to produce an actual performance of a person's playing as recorded in the recording studio. And this is the stack located beneath the key bed. 
There are 88 pneumatics or bellows, each of them connected by a wire to the key above. When a hole appears in the tracker bar, air rushes through the tracker bar, down the tube to the valve in the back, the pneumatic collapses, causes the note to play. When the hole in the paper disappears, the impulse is shut off, the valve falls to the rest position, the pneumatic opens again, and the note also returns to the rest position. System, the two pneumatics that control the actual playing as controlled by the margins along the side of the roll. The pneumatic pump driven by an electric motor. Mason Hamlin used the Ampico system. The Ampico system was one that had people like Rachmaninoff record for it. The mechanism was located in a drawer which was fitted beneath the key bed of the piano. The drawer could be conveniently opened, the roll inserted, and then pushed back out of the way. Every piano manufacturer had some form of player piano during the 20s. And the larger manufacturers had usually one of the three reproducing systems, the Duart, the Ampico, or the Welty. Actually, the Welty developed in Germany was the grandfather or the forerunner of all the reproducing systems. Every great pianist in the 20s recorded for one of the reproducing systems. In the 20s, if a man was rich, he would look for a suitable location on which to build his home or mansion. And in this home, he would install perhaps the latest antiques and the latest technology that the 20s had to offer. Among these, of course, would be a reproducing grand piano and a pipe organ. For nothing spelled wealth and success like a pipe organ. But these people didn't know how to play a pipe organ. And so manufacturers were quite quick to supply a machine that could play the organ for them, operated by a paper roll. Here we have a, Wel a Wurlitzer Theater pipe organ fitted with a Welty multi-changer. This changer contained 10 rolls that could be selected by a small call box located conveniently in the music room. Imagine sitting in your music room in an easy chair, reaching over to the end table and pushing any one of these ten buttons, or all ten of them, and having the organ begin, play your selections, and then shut itself off. A comparison between the two rolls, the wealthy pipe organ roll on the left and the player roll on the right. And here is the mechanism that actually plays the organ. The ten rolls located or on this cycling bicycle chain circulate around the player until the correct roll comes into position. The white buttons are call buttons located at the player so that an operator could set up the machine at the machine itself. The roll is moved into place, the tracker bar moves forward, we see tracking holes appear, these keep the roll in alignment with the tracker bar. We see stop changes along the side, and the organ begins to play. We can see the pneumatic pump at the bottom driven by an electric motor. And here are two pneumatics working in opposition which control the shades of the shutters of the organ, giving it expression. We can 
gives you some of the yards of chain that move these rolls around, some of the wiring and some of the mechanisms that are necessary for this unit to operate. Here is some 700 feet of rubber tubing. And here are some pneumatics that actually control the stops or the ranks or sets of pipes that are found in the organ. These are also controlled by the marginal perforations along the paper roll. The organist organ is quite capable of changing the stops of the registration of the organ as the roll. We like to think of multiplexing as being a development of 1970. But in 1915, the wealthy company developed this relay which allowed one hole to op operate three functions. Either play a pedal note, a note on the great manual or lower manual, or both together. Behind this beautiful grill, we'll see that we find the heart of the pipe organ, the actual pipes themselves. And here is the forest of metal and wooden pipes that form the pipe organ. We can see the trumpets and the voxamanas. And at the bottom, we see the regulators, which are large boxes to control the wind. The one in the foreground is being tremulated to give the organ its characteristic wavering sound. Above, we see sleigh bells and other percussions which are so necessary for theater work for which this organ was designed. The chimes at the background. You can see the smallest and the longest pipe, the smallest being about a half inch and the longest being 16 feet. And not all theaters could afford the big Wurlitzer. A small house of, say, 300 seats would buy a small Wurlitzer pit orchestra. Along each side of this pit orchestra are two extra chambers. Actually, it was a player piano fitted with some organ pipes and percussion. Here we have some of the percussion. You see drums and cymbals and snares, triangles, castanets. to operate the two rolls so that music could be quickly changed from one roll to the other so there would be no break in continuity of music for the movie. And below we see some of the various tubings and controls. Here are the two sets of organ pipes in this world, sir. A set of strings and a set of flutes. And here we have the world of tremolo again to give the characteristic wavering sound so necessary in theater work. famous Wurlitzer bird. Our operator is now going to prepare the machine so we can see and hear how the machine might actually be used for a silent film.